Hi, I'm Camilla Kay. I am Deputy Editor on Glamour UK, work with Deborah, and I'm European Beauty Director. Hi, I'm Deborah Joseph. I'm Editor in Chief at Glamour and European Editorial Director. Okay, this is to both of us. Okay. Um, what is one piece of advice you would give to your younger self? Well, that feels quite relevant because we actually met when we were 10. So, um, what would we have said to our 10 year old selves when we met? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going to work out. Because it does. Kind of just does, doesn't it? Look at us. We're still here. Kind 40 of years later. I know. <laughs> years later. I think I would say. This girl is going to be your main girl. You don't know it yet, but you're going to have a l 30 years of fun with her. <laughs> Our lives have yeah. gone in parallel yeah. a yeah, lot parallel. in careers yeah. and personally, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. Having kids at the same time and working in the same places. Yeah. Yeah. And even having the same boyfriend once. Yes, once when we were very young. We had our 21st birthday together. In the Hacienda. Yeah, in Manchester. Yeah. I don't think we thought anything at the time. I think we were just always go-getters. Both of us yeah. just kind of went along and didn't think too much. It's probably a bit what we're like now, actually. Yeah. yeah. My personal biggest challenge, I think it was going back to work at Glamour when I had three children aged two, four and six at the time. And um, it was really tough. You know, I've talked about this a lot, but when you're younger, as a girl, you were told you can do anything, or certainly I was told that, but no one ever told me how you do that along with a young family. So when I find myself in my dream job as editor of Glamour, um, it was like, great, I'd love to do this, but how, how, do you, how do you balance the fact you've got the needs of three young people at home as well? Yeah. I think that was really difficult, and I did really think very long and hard about leaving a few times because I just didn't feel I was coping very well with it and but you proved that yeah, you can do it you I'm proud that you can of myself for sticking it out and getting through the difficult times um, now they're a bit older it's much more manageable but yeah it was tough it was tough yeah. and, and I think you always feel like you're failing yeah. um, at everything at motherhood at, you know at work as a wife as a friend as a, you know in, in every area of your life you feel you're not quite achieving what you want to achieve and you just got to get through that period and I'm proud I'm proud that I managed to do it Talking professionally a bit as well, I feel like, you know, we were both from print journalism backgrounds, yes. weren't we? And then we came and working at Glamour and that whole digital revolution of Glamour. And I'm really proud of what you and me and the team have achieved, you know, because that is no, has been no mean feat over the last six no. years, has it? No. In like a digital changing landscape and yet making a success of Glamour. Here we are six years on from when we started that mission um, and the brand is doing really well and going from strength to strength. So I think we've got to be proud of that. Yeah. Okay, so one that I really remember, I mean, oh God, obviously I've been told and learned a million over the years of being doing beauty for like 25 years, but one that really stuck out with me from really early days actually um, was always take your skincare down to your chest and always take your body care up to your she face. She tells me to do this all the time because I don't do it. And your neck is some of the thinnest, most fragile skin on your body that we often don't take care of. And as you get older, it really starts to show and give your age away. So I always remember that one. Doesn't mean I always practice it, but you know, I always remember that one. Mine is put moisturizer on every day. It doesn't even matter what the brand is, just put moisturizer on. And I learned this when I asked a beauty director once about 15 years ago, you know, do these, do these products work? Is there any point in me spending money on, on all of this? And she showed me both of her hands and this hand was probably about 15 years younger than this hand, the skin on it. This hand had age spots, it was wrinkled, this hand was smooth with no age spots. And she said she'd been a beauty director for 20 years and every morning she'd, wo you know, she'd come to work, open pots of cream and gone like this on her hand to test it. And she said, I don't know which cream it is that's done this or if it's multiple creams, but look at the difference. And from that day, I think I was, I don't know, was I, was in, I was in my 20s when she said that to me. I have worn cream every single morning and night. It doesn't matter. You know, if I travel sometimes and I forget my cream, I even just take the small pot of body cream and put it on my face, but I just will never ever not wear cream again. Why should we celebrate International Women's Day? Is there a message you would want to give those watching or maybe something you think they need to hear? 
So we always say at Glamour, don't we, that we celebrate International Women's Day every day of the year. Yeah. It shouldn't be one day of the year. Um, and I feel like we do, we do try and do that, don't we? Elevate and celebrate women's voices every day of the year. Um, it shouldn't just be one day. No, it shouldn't. But you need it, and you need to raise the voices of women one day a year, even if that's the only day that certain people are taking notice. Because I think sometimes we feel that we're in a post feminist world where women have equal rights, but we don't. You know, if you look at the, the gender pay gap, women are still paid less. And, you know, obviously in the UK, we're in a lot of ways we, we are equal, um, but still opportunities aren't equal. And the way women are treated in the health system, even. Um, just everyday experiences show you this kind of everyday sexism that we all experience and that that's something we still have to fight against. As for other countries around the world, abortion rights are still very much up in the air and um, there are so many countries where women still can't really even have the opportunities to work. So um, I think until there is true equality, you have to have an International Women's Day. Yeah. And also for, you know, we've just launched our Glamour Consent Survey where we surveyed um, almost 4,000 Glamour readers and, you know, there's a shocking stat that 41% had experienced sexual assault in some kind of way and then when you read those kind of stats you realise that there's still kind of so much work to be done for women in the women's space yeah. and that's something that I'm really proud that we do. I do know, I get asked this question more than any other question. <laughs> I do meet, and we have met so yeah. many incredible women, so many from, you know, A-list celebrities to business women to um, just women from all walks of life. I have to say there has never been just one woman that's inspired me. I'm inspired all the time by different people in different areas. You know, I'm inspired by women who uh, stay at home full time and look after their children because I don't think I could do that. And so I'm like, wow, you are amazing. You, you you do an amazing job in looking after your home, looking after your kids. Really a selfless job, actually. And then I meet incredible business women that I look at who've built, you know, Marianne being one of them, quite frankly, who've built these incredible businesses. And I think, wow, look, look how you've done that. I wonder how you've done that. And then I just meet everyday women that inspire me with, you know, with their stories. Every woman has a story to tell. And mm -hmm. if you kind of scratch beneath the surface, they will inspire you in one way or another. So I, I, I can't find one. I ne I've never had been able to find the one. Um, well, I was thinking about this question before, and I was thinking about, you know, the celebrities that we've covered and met and interviewed recently and having um, gone to LA last year and done the cover shoot with Paris Hilton. She, I found, was really kind of amazing and inspirational. It turned out that she did our full eight hour shoot day the day after her son arrived in her life. Um, and none of us knew on set and she was really warm and really positive and really up for collaboration which isn't always the case um, with mega celebrities and she I just found her really inspirational you know she had a really hard story to tell that she revealed in her book and talked to us about in that interview and I found that really inspirational that she's fighting for young people who were in situations like her who'd faced abuse um, and I just found it interesting, the Paris Hilton character that she created, which is what everybody thinks she's like, but she's not actually like that at all. Um, and she's used that to her advantage, and I thought, you know, hats off to you, Paris. Um, also, Megan Fox, who we have covered in Glamour, she gave it a really amazing interview. Um, you know, she'd had a real personal journey with fame and kind of was coming back on her own, the second time round on her own terms. And I found that, you know, quite insightful and inspirational. And I feel like sometimes people in the media, um, you don't really get to see what they're like. And I felt like she bared a little bit of, bit of her soul and, um, and I found her pretty amazing and interesting too. I think Camilla and I, both felt a little bit like outsiders in this industry. We're both Northern. Um, I don't think we both came from the kind of background that um, a lot of people came from originally in, in our industry. And, and we've kind of worked our way up. Both of us are quite real and true to who, who we are and how we grew up, I think. And I felt like when we came up and, and took over Glamour, we really wanted to 
continue the work that Glamour has always done, quite frankly, to make people feel included and, and to make people feel that they're part of a community and that they belong. And um, that meant changing some of our content to make sure that more diverse, diverse voices were heard and that you know all ethnicities, um, all genders um, felt welcome. And I think the biggest compliment to me is when someone says, oh, you know, I didn't think glamour was for me and then I looked at it and, and there's so much on there that is for me and, and I love that and I hope that all women, no matter where they're from, what their background, what their ethnicity, come to glamour and find something that, that's relevant to them and something that makes them feel good about themselves. I mean, I think the positive for me in glamour is that, you know, we're quite real and we will talk about anything, won't we? We'll, there's no taboo really at glamour and I feel like... Um, that allows you also to have slightly the message of, you know, you are enough. You know, you don't need to be any more, you are enough, you know. Um, you don't have to look a certain way, be a certain way, behave a certain way, have a career that's a certain way. I think there's an openness, and back to your point, inclusivity. Um, and increasingly in the media landscape, I think that's an important space for people to have and to be. Um, so I think that would be my core message, you are enough. What do I love most about being a mother? It's not one thing, obviously, it's every single day, it's something new, but I think watching and helping shape incredible people is, is a huge privilege and not one that I take lightly. So, uh, um, you know, I've got a son and I've got two daughters and they're all growing to be well-rounded, great people and it gives me pleasure every day to see that. Um, the challenges they face are very different to the challenges I faced as, as, as it, when I was young, especially on social media and I'm just, you know, interested in helping them navigate that landscape to make sure that they feel good about themselves, that they're true to who they want to be, and that they, they remain safe. Um, yeah. What can I say? Um, I've got a son and a daughter, and I'm with you. It's a privilege. Um, it, is. it is a privilege, but it also gives me great angst, if I'm really <laughs> honest. Because I'm like, for me, the definition of parenting is imperfect. There's no such thing as a perfect parent. And, you know, I sometimes think I second guess myself a lot because, you know, you are so responsible for how they um, learn about situations, deals with situations. Like you've said, it's a completely different landscape. So even I feel like I'm probably quite an open and honest parent and our generation are probably much more that than our parents were yeah. but it's hard to navigate because we didn't grow up in an era of social media yeah. of um you know being born a digital native and so that is you know that is hard sometimes to think that you've got it right or even know what's right um but it is amazing to watch them grow and become their own person and um you know i'm forever in awe really of their achievements yeah. and their abilities and even with my imperfect parenting I'm sure they're going to become amazing people I hope so I hope so <laughs> that's what we pray for <laughs> what was the driving force behind starting up the glamour women of the year awards how did it evolve oh. Well, first I didn't start it. It had been going for about 17 years before I came on board. Though I was involved with the first one ever because I did work on Glam, as you know, um, for its very first issue and for the first few years of, of its being in the UK. And I worked on the first ever uh, Glam and of Year Awards. When we went digital first six years ago, we were kind of reshaping the brand and we didn't feel that it was the right time to continue the award ceremony at the time. But then a couple of years ago, Camilla and, and I were like, We've got it to where we want it to be. Um, female empowerment is so much at its heart. It just felt really authentic. And, the, and you know, we were just coming out of COVID and we needed to celebrate. We wanted to party. We wanted to showcase amazing women's stories. And it just felt like the right time. And, and it was, it's been incredible, hasn't it? We've, we've done two, three actually, one online and then two, two since COVID. And it's been yeah. night of the year for us yeah. definitely growing bigger and better every yeah, year it's yeah it's brilliant some amazing women we had some amazing women. just feeling the energy in the room of women supporting women and that power in the room it's 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 something to behold in yeah. fact i'm going to bring my daughter next year oh, that'd be yeah nice. she's only 11 but she really wants to come and i want her to experience that yeah. i never had anything like that when i was younger and 
I wanted to see those women standing up and, and talking about their achievements yeah. and to, you know, to be witness to those conversations. I wanted to share it actually because I was, I was talking to a colleague about what I was talking about earlier about the struggles that I had when I first came to Glamour with three young children. Felt like I was constantly failing. Um, looked around, no one else seemed to be failing as hard as I was, but obviously I now know that's not true because we were all very busy pretending that everything's always great. And um, in my head, when that was going on, I just thought, well, I, I just can't do it all and something's got to give, so I'm going to consciously drop 30% and I'm going to focus on the 70%. And I just kind of started doing this in my own head. When I couldn't do something, I'd think I'm going to just, I'm going to consciously drop that. I'm going to say I'm not doing it now. Not never, just not now and I'm going to be okay with that. I'm not going to feel the shame or the guilt for not being able to do it. And I mentioned it to a work colleague and it, it, he was a, a single man and he was like, what do you mean you live your best 70% life? I want to do that. And so I started talking to him about it and then I realised that actually maybe this message of not being perfect and not trying to achieve everything and it's okay and don't put such high expectations on yourself actually is a message probably we all need to hear um, and so um, yeah that's why I shared it and I wrote an article about it on Glamour originally and I, I, I was completely inundated with messages and emails even one of the mums at the school gate who I didn't know very well said I've had your article ripped out of the magazine and in my bag for two years and I didn't realise she didn't realise I'd written it and she said every time I'm having a bad day I get out and read it get it out and read it and I was like wow that, that's really powerful if, if you can make people feel better even for a minute a day then great so okay. that, that's why that's why I started sharing it you know what <laughs> you know what I also I think it's important that you admit when you make a mistake uh, and I quite often say I've made a mistake and that's okay you know people are so busy trying to pretend to be perfect and never showing off our failures or, or we and I don't think they're weaknesses it's just human being a human being but I think just saying I've, I've messed up um, I'm going to do this to try and you know fix the problem or I've messed up and actually I, I can't do it now I'm going to have to get help that's fine just ask for the help. Well I think that the kind of overall concept of what a female leader should be or what they, what they should look like or how they should live their life has to change because I think women still suffer so much from imposter syndrome and I think that's because sometimes I think women when I was growing up certainly had this persona of perfection they're the, the type that got up at five o'clock in the morning and went to the gym and, and ate, ate a very healthy breakfast and had their children perfectly all the clothes laid out perfectly and came to work with like not a hair out of place <laughs> and Camilla and I both can, <laughs> can attest to the fact that's just not the reality of you know, Does it happened one day in the last 365. Never, never, never. Um, and I think that we have to make the next generation of women feel that it's okay that if you don't fit into this cookie cutter view of what a successful woman looks like, and whatever it is that you're, you're good at, you, you find the area where you can thrive and succeed, and that's very different and different whether you want to go into you know STEM or in my case it was creative. You know, we we have to create different views of success. And whether it's, you know, some people might want to work from home and set up a business from home. Some people might want to work for a big corporation. Um, and there has to be visibility. Because um, if you don't see it, you can't be it. So I think for me, I hope that I'm the visibility um, for, for other women who may or may not want to go down my path. So for me, the beauty industry, the positive and the it of the beauty industry, the positive of the beauty industry is the power of beauty to make people feel great. For me, that is one of the biggest positives of the industry. Um, you know how it can make you feel about yourself, whether that's having a lovely bath and having a bit of self care and chill out time, whether that's putting your cream on every morning and it making you feel good about yourself. You know, a new lipstick making you feel a bit more confident in the boardroom or whatever it might be. I think the power of beauty is something that should be celebrated. Um, as for changes in the industry, I feel like, you know, we're all obsessed with newness, which is great, but I also feel like as we move forward and we look at, um, you know, goals ahead, I think we've got to think more sustainably about beauty as we move forward. I've definitely got a beauty motto, I agree.
My, my beauty motto is the, uh, the harder the day, the bouncier the blow dry. <laughs> what about you? Um, well, I just live by the glamour rule, which is your beauty, your rules. Do what the hell you, want, you want and go with it. Um, well, we often talk about beauty as not just being, you know, the surface outside part of beauty, but about beauty and identity and kind of the deeper, more meaningful stories of beauty and how your identity reflects um, and the stories around that, which are kind of what we find really interesting. Um, you know, you've talked a lot about you and your hair and your hair coming from your, mm. uh, your Iranian heritage, mm. haven't you? And kind mm. of what that meant to you and what you learned from your mum. And I think it's those stories of beauty and, and identity and what they mean to you um, that I find really, you know, interesting and inspiring when we hear them. What is the one thing you do daily for yourself for self-love, self-care and overall well-being? I can answer that for her. Oh, go on then. She goes in the hot tub every night at home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was my best purchase in lockdown. The classic lockdown purchase was a pop-up hot tub and getting in hot water is the joy. So yes, you're right. The hot tub, whenever it's working, is, is definitely a joy. Um, and also, I think just practicing a little bit of gratitude, like I don't journal or I don't do any of that. But sometimes when I'm sitting on the bus on the way home from work, I just think, oh, you know, that was good or this was great or that happened and this was good, you know, and just a little bit of gratitude. It's even written on my bracelet here, gratitude. Yeah, um, yeah I think a little bit of gratitude goes a long way. I'm trying to teach that to my kids at the moment. Yeah. yeah make them list all the things that were that are why they're so lucky you know because they say yeah. oh mum it's not fair I'm like well let's talk about all the things that are fair <laughs> yeah. yeah or where you've got yeah. more than where your fair share more than your fair share exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah.